I just finished scouring the internet to see what is being said about the best web frameworks of 2023. This year has brought another wave of innovation in the world of web development. Having the right tool can mean the difference between banging your head on the keyboard and laughing all the way to the bank. So join me as I take a look at the top web frameworks of 2023, each poised to revolutionize the way we build and deploy web applications. I have already spent hours online looking at articles, but let me just point out two examples I came across. This one is listed as a guide to the best web application frameworks for 2023. The top web frameworks they have listed are React, Angular, Vue.js, Django, number five, Ruby on Rails. Who wrote this article? That has to be a fluke, right? Let's look at this other article. This is listed as the 10 best web development frameworks to use in 2023. At least this one is split between backend and frontend. Backend comes first. Number one, Express. Okay. Number two, Django. Number three, Rails again. Come on. What does this have to say about the front end? Number one, best front end, Angular. This is another article I can't take seriously. These are two very similar lists from reputable sites. How have we gotten here? What should a real list look like? First, let's define the criteria. A good web framework should have ease of use, should have a low learning curve, clear documentation, and be intuitive. It should come with scalability, the ability to handle growth, maintaining performance with increased traffic. It should have community support with an active developer community and access to updates and best practices. It should come with security, built-in security features, protection from attacks, and easy implementation. And last, but most importantly, performance. Fast, reliable, handle high request volumes without slowdowns. So what would my list be? Number one, SvelteKit. Why? Efficient rendering. SvelteKit compiles components at build time, resulting in highly optimized, lightweight code that leads to faster initial page loads and improved performance. SvelteKit offers seamless client-side navigation and supports server-side rendering out of the box. That gives a smooth user experience and excellent SEO capabilities. SvelteKit comes with automatic code splitting. It automatically splits the code into smaller, manageable chunks, allowing for, again, faster initial page loads and better performance. This feature alone helps optimize the user experience by only loading the necessary code for the current page, reducing unnecessary data transfer. Despite the cons, which we're all aware of, still, SvelteKit is the best. Number two, Next.js. Why? It's popular, and it's a must if you like React. Three goes to Supabase and Firebase. They're an all-in-one backend as a service, not cheap, but dang easy to use. And by the way, Supabase has a slight lead here. Number four was originally going to go to Pocket Base, which was only going to be the number four spot because it's not at a 1.0, but I've removed it due to plans to slow development, and I am so sad about that. So spots four and five both go to any Rust backend. Why? Because it's 2023 and people need to get with the times. I am purposefully leaving off anything that was written with technology that was created before today's internet existed. Instead, Take your pick from Rocket, Actix, or Axum, to name a few. What about front end? Number one, Svelte, of course, but why? Efficient DOM manipulation. Svelte compiles components into highly efficient JavaScript code, resulting in minimal runtime overhead for fast and smooth user experiences. It has no virtual DOM. Unlike many other front end frameworks, Svelte doesn't rely on a virtual DOM which means more efficient rendering and reduced memory usage, especially for complex applications. Svelte syntax is intuitive. It's easy to learn. It has a straightforward approach to reactive programming. It also provides simple yet powerful ways to manage application state without the need for additional libraries. The cons for Svelte as a front end are the same as Svelte kit for the back end. So what about spots two through five? Number two, React, of course. It's exactly what it was designed to be fast enough. It's reusable and component-based with an absolutely giant ecosystem behind it. Number three is Vue. For me, is a better developer experience than React, but it just doesn't seem like it's growing, so they got demoted. Number four is Ember because it's super helpful if you need a cross-platform application, and the five spot goes to Angular. It's been around forever, is developed by Google, has made great improvements lately, 
and comes with a big set of tools and libraries. Love it or hate it, this is my list of best frameworks of 2023. Comment below with what your thoughts are and why you think that way.